I have a special guest in today's video. She is a coworker of mine who was one of the first reporters who went to Chafee County, Colorado to cover this case. She also spoke with Chafee County Sheriff John Speezy and Trevor Knoll. She works the weekend, so she was paying close attention in the beginning when Barry made his plea online and when dive teams went out that first weekend to search. So without further ado, let's talk to Amber Jo Cooper. that night when I first read the press comp or press release it was Monday night we were already in our nine o'clock newscast and I just put it on the web real quick um, tell me a little bit about when did you go what did you see what stood out to you when you read that press release and what kind of what were your intentions when you went to Salida you know we've I've been following the missing women across Colorado for the since I started at Fox in 2017 and when that was posted, I remember looking up where it was, and I realized that that's kind of in our area. It's a little far away, but um, I really was interested and I wanted to cover it. And they sent, so you posted that on Monday. I was sent Wednesday by myself. And that was the first day that our station covered this. And I think I, I, when I arrived there, uh, there was no other stations there at the time. Yes, the houses are kind of far apart in the woods, but I wanted to see if I could talk to anyone who might know anything. And so I drove around for hours, um, just trying to find anyone, stop anyone I could. And, you know, the first guy that I talked to, Michael Jones, he is a neighbor but he's been there, he's been there for 25 years and didn't know Suzanne. And he told me that, you know, nothing's ever happened like this in 25 years there. They, you know, leave their doors unlocked and it's not that, it's a type of town where you don't have to worry about anything. And so very strange, a, a woman is missing yeah. in their small town. Yeah, and he, he couldn't believe it. And then I talked to another gentleman who was walking mm -hmm. very close to their house. Mm -hmm. And I kind of pulled up to him, I'm like, hello. You know, he saw my box car. And I said, can you, you know, do you know anything about this missing woman? And he said, no, I don't even know her. Kind of just didn't have any information for me. And I told him what was happening. I said, you know, a woman right right over there. Yeah. And he, he you know, he was concerned and he just didn't have any information. Um, for me and then I I did talk to another person who I was on the side of the road and a, a guy stopped in a car I think it was like a jeep or something and he was like what, what's the news doing here and mm -hmm. I told him what was happening and he was like well, you know that's crazy and it just seemed like nobody knew what was happening in the own town no one knew or it seemed like from people you stopped people did not know about a missing woman they didn't know about Suzanne Wow. Yeah. And uh, and you were there Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, May 13th, and she had been reported missing May 10th. We didn't get a press release until May 11th at like 9.15 at night. And so uh, you were saying about how there wasn't a lot of cell phone service in the area. And that kind of, I don't know, what was your thoughts on that? I was just thinking if someone's missing here or they need help, how are they going to call? If it just, for miles and miles, there's no service. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of was a little bothersome because you're looking at this grand forest and it's it, like, I think um, someone said, I think it was, they said a needle in a haystack, right? Um, Suzanne's brother mm -hmm. said, you know, so, yeah, I woke up and I saw it and I said, to myself like oh this is searching for a needle in a haystack and when he said that in that interview I remember being like yeah it's it's that big mm -hmm. you know yeah so you also talked to Trevor Knoll mm -hmm. and at, at that time we thought that he was the you know family spokesperson 
What was that conversation like and how was his demeanor and what did he sound like on the phone to you? Did he ever break out in a cry or, you know, was he emotional on the phone to you? He was very um, serious and, you know, he didn't want to be on camera. He didn't want people to like focus on him or who he was. He just said, you know, I want to focus on Suzanne. Like this is about mm -hmm. Suzanne. And I was like, absolutely. And he, I asked him to describe her and, you know, he said she's a lovely human and described her to the best of his ability. Um, he told me about the reward. He said that, you know, Barry put up 100000 and it was matched by a family friend. And he said, we just want her back, no questions asked. So when he said those terms for the reward, did that kind of, was that something new to you or had you heard that? And did you question him and his, um, his terms of the reward? I think I was a little confused at first because I didn't know if this reward was connected to the sheriff's office or not. And I think I remember calling the sheriff's office and being like, there's this reward. And then they didn't know what I was talking about. But the, since the family told us about it, so we knew about it. Um, and I think I even said like, you know, what is, what, can you elaborate on like no questions asked? And he was like, you know, it's self-explanatory. And so that's kind of what we knew. When I first talked to Sheriff John Speezy, it was before CBI, FBI got involved. And I was asking him, do you need volunteers to even just pass out flyers? And he said, no. Um, and I asked him about any searches, like volunteer searches. And he said right now they were using certain dogs that um, the scent could be uh the dogs could be deterred from the scent from just random searchers. So they said, no, they don't need any volunteers. Uh, so what did the sheriffs tell you when you talked to him? When I talked to him, he said that they didn't need any help and that they had no in new information that he could give me. Tell me more about that area in JP County and where, you know, deputies were closing off highway or it was near Highway 50 and County Road 225. Tell me more about that area. You know, that main road in front of, the main road is- Highway 50. Yeah, it's, cars are going fast. And I remember thinking, you know, if, if she was on a bike, uh, like I asked, I even asked a neighbor, I said, do people bike along this road? And they're like, no, not, it's not, it's not that, it's not safe. Um, so then I started to look at the map of, her house and I noticed that there was you know some trails and things like down and paths and different things in the neighborhood and you know I saw a lake and mm -hmm. I you know just trying to piece things together in my mind but it definitely didn't seem like somebody could safely be dry uh, biking you know on that road um, just because of the speed of the cars and how close the roads it's not that big there's not a lot of on the sides you know, there's not a lot of room to kind of feel And you, safe. when you looked at a map, you saw trails in the opposite direction of where, you know, County Road 225 and Highway 50 meet. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, and then when we found out that the, the dive team was out there, you know, you can kind of see on the map that the, there's a, a body of water there kind of near their house. Mm -hmm. Foose's Lake. Mm -hmm. So when, let's talk more about that Sunday. Um, so you were working the weekend mm -hmm. and you were paying close attention to where the family, Trevor Knoll, told you to look. You, they, they said that they would be putting updates on the Facebook page, mm -hmm. find Suzanne Morphew. So on Sunday you were looking, you saw a video of Barry Morphew, Suzanne's husband, making a plea. It was his first public plea and his only, really, that he produced himself. So tell me about that video and what did you do immediately after you saw it? Yeah, so that was huge because that was the first time we heard from a family member. And I remember pulling it up and it's on that Facebook page. Um, and I was trying to figure out and, you know, I kind of realized I don't think, that this wasn't released by the sheriff's office, this was released by Barry. And, you know, it was kind of produced, like, obviously it had a good camera, um, 
you know, I shoot on an iPhone, so I can kind of tell the quality of video. And to me, it just didn't seem like it was an iPhone video that, you know, he kind of made or posted. It seemed like it was produced. Um, and I called the sheriff's office, or I called CBI, uh, or the spokes, I don't remember if it was, I know who it was. Was it Susan Medina? Mm -hmm. The CBI spokesperson, who okay. at that time we had learned from Friday because of Sheriff John Speezy's first and only press conference that, um, you know, CBI spokesperson Susan Medina would was be, assigned, was assigned yeah. to be the spokesperson. Yeah. And so when you called her, what did you tell her and what was her reaction? Um, you know, I said, hey, I wanted to get to see, you know, if you guys had a response to this video and um, kind of asked her about it. And she said, what video? And I, and I was like, there's a video that Barry Morphy just released and she didn't know anything about it. So, you know, I posted the article. I'm sure that they saw it then. But when I called, they didn't know anything about it. Wow. And did she ever call you back and say, hey, this is our statement that day? Do you remember? I don't remember. Okay. And that was the same day that the Pueblo Dive team was out searching Foose's Lake, which is right behind Suzanne Morphy's house. Um, did they find anything, anything that they said or released that was connected to the case at all? No, um, we didn't, and we didn't have a crew there. Um, so we were kind of unsure the only thing that we knew was what the sheriff's office was telling us and they sent us pictures i do remember a few photos from that day yeah um i mean since this has this was this case was on the heels of another um, missing persons case that we covered pretty heavily again in stout he was 11 year old boy went missing in el paso county mm -hmm. um, in january of last year and uh, you know, it later happened that his his stepmother, who was the one that called and reported him missing, she was uh, she's uh, she was arrested and she's charged with first degree murder. And her her trial hasn't happened yet, so she's just been accused. But I mean, we saw that sheriff's office in El Paso Camp County handle that case, and then we just are seeing. Kind of what Chafee County is doing. I understand El Paso County is the biggest county in the state versus Chafee County, but um, what were the biggest differences that you saw from covering that missing person's case to Suzanne Morphy's missing case? You know, I think in our area they do a good job giving updates and as much information as they can. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that Chafee County, they They've never, I, I just, in my opinion, I don't know, I felt like they never have dealt with anything like this. Um, and so, you know, when we, me and you were calling the sheriff to try and get more details, you know, I think it was frustrating me and you, and, you know, because we want to help, we want to get the word out, we want to get her name out there. But it's hard sometimes when you're not, you're not getting any updates for days, months, weeks. Um, so there is a difference, but then, you know, they did assign a CBI spokesperson for Sheriff Spazy. Um, I'm sure he was getting bombarded. Called, yeah. yeah. Which I completely yeah. understand if you're trying to do an investigation. He, he obviously had help, which I think he needed. He, did, he doesn't have the resources like we have here. He was know? the first sheriff that I didn't know didn't have a PIO, which is a public information officer, which mm -hmm. a lot of um, sheriff's office, police departments, even you know city and county officials have someone that goes in front of a camera, talks to the media, give updates, tweets, texts, right. you know, like texts us with updates and things like that. And that was the first time um, that the sheriff, he, I went into their office and I was like, do you guys have a PIO? No. Uh, usually just Sheriff Speezy does the information and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and so do you feel like from, you know, we were just on the heels of Gannon Stock's case and the family was giving updates. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were doing videos with the sheriff and then compared that to Suzanne's case. What did you think of the difference there? Um, yeah, well, Gannon's case, you know, 
they were doing as much as they could, releasing videos that were very emotional. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, they wanted to find him. They wanted, they were at, crying for help. Um, it's hard to compare situations, but I would say when I was, you know, covering that, you know, I reached out to Suzanne's daughters. Um, they didn't return my messages. Um, you know, I was trying to help them find her. And the only person I was able to speak with was Trevor. You know, I was assigned to other things um, going forward just because we had, you know, limited resources or whatever it was. Um, and, you know, I kind of passed along what I knew to you and we were sharing information and kind of like, you know, I was telling you what I saw, what I knew. I remember which route you told me to take <laughs> to get there. Yeah. And, and, to, and you also warned me about the cell service and how yeah. there's not a lot of self-service there. Yeah, because I was nervous that you were going to try and get Or there I would get and, lost or and something. And you would get lost. Yeah, and yeah. Were, were you by yourself? Yeah, you, I was yeah. by myself when I went. So just knowing what I knew, I, I tried to tell you, and then you were able to go to the dig site once we found out that they were. Yeah, so when I had heard rumblings of, uh, you know, the FBI digging, and um, they, they were on County Road 105, which is east of Salida, which is – about 20 minutes from Suzanne Morphy's house, I first went out there and I had heard of another location that there was a lot of police activity and things like that. So I went there first. I didn't go to the dig site initially. And I went to, I can't, I think it's County Road 240 um, and Highway 50. And there were um, multiple state pat patrolmen kind of just parked there, their lights weren't on, but they were like hunkered down. And one of the deputy or one of the patrol officers told me that he had been there since three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, and he's like, I can't tell you, but I've been there. And I later found out that that was actually where um, Barry Morphew was staying, was up on that ridge um, at George Davis's house. So I think they just wanted uh, to make sure that the family was kind of away from what the investigation was happening. And so then after that, I went to the dig site area and there was already, I think channel four from Denver, channel 31 from Denver as well. And then I got there and then some other Colorado Springs stations got there eventually. But they would not let us like even a block or two from where they were digging at the, the house property that was being built. And mm -hmm. they never confirmed to us that Barry Morphew, Suzanne's husband, worked there on that property. Um, they eventually sent out a press release saying that, you know, um, they didn't find anything. Yes, it's connected to um, Suzanne Morphew's case. The, the people that own the property was cooperating. They're not involved. They just... Um, we're letting them dig at the property and we were having helicopters um, there was one helicopter that passed around to get video and then we had some drone footage as well and so we could kind of get a bird's eye view as what was happening um, because from where we were on the ground we really couldn't see um, and when I try to go up to um, the I, th I don't think it was even a deputy I think it was like a marshal a US marshal that was there but he wouldn't tell me anything. <laughs> so when we, so when I looked at the video from a, uh, the bird's eye view from the drone, I could see like big old squares, you know, dug out of the of the cement, and they were sifting through things, and um, that was really interesting. And they said at the end of the day that they were going to be back the next day, and this was on Friday. Yeah, so, I mean, that was interesting to know that, you know, it was a very active investigation. It wasn't, you know, it didn't seem like it was going to be a cold case at all. And they were really searching for Suzanne and they didn't tell us exactly how they got to that site. Um, but they had been there for a day at least when we got there. Um, and then they stayed for three days um, searching that property. And they still to this day have not told us what they found there or anything, you know, they just said at this point they had no evidence that connected to Suzanne's case. So they didn't tell us exactly um, how they got to that site. I did later talk to a neighbor who said, um, who confirmed to me that Barry Morphy used, uh, was working on that property and um, she had heard a, a strange noise, I believe, on Friday uh, 
the before Mother's Day. So, anyways, that's kind of what what made me, you know, find out more is because of the neighbor. She was really sweet. She was uh, Mary Branson was her name. Um, so, anyways, uh, you know, there has been a lot transpire, but there hasn't been because the Chavy County Sheriff's Office hasn't given us a lot of info mm -hmm. since, um, you know, since the initial first month, it seems like. But I do do know that they have been working really tirelessly on this on this case and with a new district attorney in uh, the 11th Judicial Branch, I believe that things will be moving quicker. Um, so, and you've done a great job oh, keeping you. up with this as much as you can. Like, you know, you guys don't know this, but Lauren, she's been so good at, you know, continuously following up for months, weeks, um, you know, trying to get as much information as we can to try and keep this in the news because I think, you know, the more we can keep it in the news, I mean, she's still missing. So you've done a great job. Everyone knows this. I don't have to say it, but you know, we, I remember like, as all this was going on, like people would call the station and be like, that Lauren Sharp, like, she's you know, doing a great job. And I'm like, you're, you're telling me, I know this, like, mm -hmm. I can't tell you guys, but she's, she's working so hard. You've done such a good job. Thank you. Yeah. Thirteen hundred missing persons in the state of Colorado, and that is of January thirty first of twenty twenty one. And there's been six hundred people go missing um, in the last, or in more than a year. So they've been missing more than a year, and there's been six hundred people of those, and that's a that's a lot of people to go missing. Mm -hmm.